There's clearly a lot that separates the pros from your average run-of-the-mill player. All it would take is maybe a minute of watching someone like Booga or Tifu to realize how dominant one can possibly be in this game. But how do you get there? What makes a pro player a pro? What's going on guys, it's me, Dan, and in this video, I'll be showing you guys what it takes to go from just being an average player to performing like a pro. Compared to your average sweat, pros have the mentality, determination, and knowledge needed to become the best. By looking at these attributes, we'll show you guys how you can become a rock solid player. So go grab a pen and paper, a nice cozy drink, and make sure you've liked the video, because we're going to get started soon. But right before that happens, you know the drill. Visit ProGuys.com for 24-7 on-demand coaching from some of the best of the best. We've added all new guide exclusive videos for pro members as well as all the up-to-date news articles from your favorite pros, so don't miss out. Click that link down below, smash the like button, and let's dive right in. If you're still struggling to improve at Fortnite despite a ton of game time, the issue likely sits with your mentality. If you're looking to get better at this game or anything else in life, it's important to be willing to learn from mistakes. What we mean is that after every death, you need to look at what you did wrong. You can't try to deflect the blame onto something else. Dying and blaming on bad RNG, a weapon being overpowered, or opponents acting recklessly are some of the common ways that we see players deflect blame. Now look, I get that sometimes those factors might have contributed to your death, but there's one thing usually in common with what players like to blame. They're all outside factors beyond your control and don't revolve around how you played. Like, if some Rambo player pushes you in the storm and you die because of it, blaming the player won't get you anywhere. Sure, their psychotic behavior got both of you killed, but you need to instead think of how you played leading up to that point. Could you have taken another rotation path? Maybe you should have been more vigilant in spotting potential players. How about rotating early next time? Regardless, the point is that you need to be primarily focusing on yourself and in trios, your team's gameplay. Think of it this way, every death is a learning experience. To improve after every lost game, you need to be able to take the time and reflect on how you could have played differently for a better outcome. Pros do this by reviewing their gameplay with either video recordings or through the in-game replay system. Using replays is honestly a fantastic way to look at your gameplay. You can use free cam or even watch from your opponent's perspective to get a better idea of how they reacted to your moves. I guarantee that with each death you review, it shouldn't be hard to come up with numerous ways that you could have played better. The pro player mentality doesn't only involve critically assessing yourself. Another trait pros have is that they usually don't tilt or get frustrated when it matters. For them, when it matters typically means when they're playing scrims or tournaments. For average players looking to improve though, it always matters. If you get tilted at frustrating things in the game, it's only going to hinder your ability to review what went wrong from an objective standpoint. Then you'll never improve. So be critical of yourself, not necessarily harsh, but just as a way to critique your gameplay. If you can recognize you're making mistakes, that leaves a ton of room for improvement, and really, it's a necessary step to becoming a better player. Okay guys, so the next thing that gives a pro their elite status is the amount they train. Becoming a pro at the game doesn't happen overnight. It can take months of dedication and serious amounts of game time to reach the highest level of skill. Most pro players are out there playing at least six hours of Fortnite each and every day, usually longer. Outside of their game sessions, they spend even more time reading, watching, and talking about Fortnite. They essentially have their lives revolve around the game. That level of dedication, along with possessing the right mentality, is what makes pro players so unbelievably good at what they do. What's important is not only how often they train, but also what kind of training they do. The regimen of each pro player can depend on their play style and what they need to work on, but there are a few areas almost all of them touch. First and foremost, they regularly warm up and train their mechanical abilities whenever they get the chance. That warm up helps keep their mechanics top notch. The three mechanics to warm up are aiming, building, and editing. To work on their shots, plenty of pros like to use Kovacs Aim Trainer for a more extreme style of warm up. Kovacs is one of the leading aim trainers out there, known for its ability to produce results among Fortnite pros. If you have a PC and really want the best out of your aim, you need to check it out on Steam. But for those of us that don't play on PC, Kovacs isn't an option. The good thing is you can still get a very effective aim warm-up in Creative. If you're looking for an aim map to try out, check out Silage's Aim Facility. We've recommended this course before and it still holds up. It's just so comprehensive and includes everything that you'd ever need in an aim warm-up. The Tile Frenzy section is especially great if you're looking for something similar to Kovacs. When it comes to building, there are two ways pro players like to train. The first is by doing it alone in creative. Some techniques don't really involve other players. For example, tunneling in 90s you can work on on your own, so you don't really need anything else to get going. The second and preferred way of warming builds by many pro players is to 1v1. By 1v1ing, you're practicing your building mechanics but in a much more realistic setting. Like, it's one thing to know how to do a high ground retake, but can you do a high ground retake and quickly adjust when a player shoots at you? 
because that's what will happen in actual fights. And being able to train for actual scenarios is much more valuable than just getting the techniques down. For editing, I still really like Selage's randomized edit course. Every time you run it, the layout changes. Randomizing the courses really helps you learn how to react to the pieces instead of just memorizing the layout. This is similar to how you'll actually edit structures in real games, and so this method of randomizing the courses is just wonderful for practicing edits. Other than their mechanical abilities, another area in which pros excel is in game sense. Game sense is what players use to make informed decisions in the game. Things like deciding when to rotate or predicting an opponent in a build fight are just some examples of where good game sense is required. It can be tougher to train game sense since it's something that can't always be taught. It normally needs to be learned through lots of trial and error. And there's no better way to learn through trial and error than by playing aggressively. By playing aggressively, you're constantly putting yourself into new and difficult scenarios to learn from. Opponents will act how you wouldn't expect them to act. They'll even pull off moves you've never seen before. Either way, most of the encounters will have something unique happen which you can familiarize yourself with. But guys, with every death, you need to make sure you're thinking about what you did wrong. That way, you can learn something. If you don't, you won't learn much, and it'll just have been a waste of time. Since there's a lot of death involved with W keying, it's pretty normal to lose arena points during this learning phase. One piece of advice is to create an alt account to play aggressive arena games on. Since you're not on your main account, you don't have to worry about losing any rating. You can play aggressively with your mind at ease. Land in hot zones and take fights whenever you can. Push players and get yourself into uncomfortable scenarios so that you can learn. When you go play on your main account, that's when you can go back to a more passive playstyle meant for getting points. Moving on, Storm Wars are probably the best way to practice competitive end games right now. It teaches you how to tunnel in the low ground, control height from above, and deal with storm pressure. Essentially, it helps teach the mechanics and game sense involved with end games. Finding Storm Wars matches has always been difficult, but there's a new easy way that I want to share with you all real quick. Zone Wars map creator Enigma recently added a new bot to his Discord server that makes finding creative lobbies a much simpler task. All you need to do is join his Discord at discord.gg slash enigma. Click the Lobby Bot FAQ channel on the left and follow the listed instructions. Essentially, you're adding a bot to your friends list that'll invite you whenever you join a match in the Discord. With this, you can quickly find a match to help practice those hectic endgame scenarios. I get that most of us don't have the option to commit most of our days to Fortnite. We've got school, homework, or jobs that we gotta take care of first. But even with those obligations, improvement is still entirely possible. Even just 30 minutes of training each time you play can be enough to significantly improve your mechanics. If you're not training already, you need to get on that right away. All right, now that we talked about the importance of mentality and training, let's talk about how the pros play. Being pro at the game isn't all about mechanics, which is one of the things a lot of stuck players need to realize. A significant part of success in competitive Fortnite revolves around game knowledge. Knowing how the game works at a deeper level can be what gives you an advantage in-game. Easily the biggest mistake an average player makes is that they don't value positioning enough. At all points in the game, whether it's early, mid, or end game, positioning matters. And it matters a lot more than you might think, especially when it comes to getting an advantage. The pros know this and treat it as a vital part of their gameplay. So here are a few quick positioning tips for each part of the game that can help you dominate players, even the better ones. During the early game, you want to look to start fights on natural high ground, like rooftops for example. Players are less likely to spot you, and you'll have the high ground advantage once the fight starts. This can really give you the upper hand needed to get those important early game frags. During the mid game, placing yourself in the center of the zone will reduce the number of rotations and distance you need to travel. You just need to make sure it's a safe position towards the center, not one where every player in the lobby has an angle to spam you down from. So look for already existing structures or hills to cover yourself with. During the end game, the high ground plays a pivotal role in the outcome of the match. Taking and holding height keeps you safe and opens up a bunch of kill opportunities. This is how a lot of top pros are able to consistently win matches. They make it to end game and then close out the match by taking control of height. What's important to note is how and when they go for height. First, you want to use some mobility to get into the optimal position, aka inside the safe zone or as close as possible to it. The right time to do this is usually whenever the current height holders are forced to move. This is normally during the first 50-50 zone, the one that's half in the storm, or the first moving zone. Once set up, you deny the current height holders from moving in and work on keeping your own height. To illustrate our point, take a look at this recent trios match from Mongrel. It's the first 50-50 zone, and our trio launch pads into an optimal spot. Because they have RPGs, they're able to easily deny the current height holders their spot. As the safe zone continues to shrink for the remainder of the match, there's very little opportunity for their opponents to retake it. Our trio reinforces their height by connecting to the build below them, further reducing the chance they get knocked off. Because of their amazing position, Mongrel and his team are able to wipe out the lobby with ease as if it were just some pub match. 
In summary, having the right mentality, training regimen, and play style are three attributes that make pro players shine. If you want to make it as a pro gamer someday, you'll need a good combination of these three traits. Always be willing to learn from your mistakes. Don't slip up on training, because it's a necessary part of keeping your abilities in working condition. And always be looking to improve your knowledge of the game, because there's more to success in competitive than just having good mechanics. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Be sure to like the video if you learned something today, and subscribe if you haven't already. We'll see you guys tomorrow.